What is up, risk takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I'm a top player in Risk Global Domination. I have a daily release on YouTube, do weekday streams on Twitch. And if you are interested in getting better, the game of risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channels. Come along the ride with me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Fixed Friday. We're playing Classic Fixed. You're in the ultimate seat. Playing some Magenta. Fixed Friday Live's classic world domination auto setup. 90 second turn with an expert neutral bot. Uh, no novices in this game. Be, uh, balance Blitz Dice Alliances are on. Fog Blizzard Portals are off. So we had all of our players ready with the neutral bot game, which is exactly what we want to see. And it looks like we are being cajoled into taking Australia. Um, let's see if White is a stupid dumb dumb head and puts in behind me. Otherwise, I just get the gift of Australia and then we'll leverage that into hopefully a better position. Is White the dumbness? I'll throw him a heart and suggest to him that uh, I'm going to be hitting Australia. Good. Good. White is not dumb. And my only, uh, that is the only player that would sink my game by putting troops back there. So we get gifted a turn one Australia. And as, uh, as those of you who are, um, familiar with the series. No, I, I have really no love for the Australia position. I'll, I'll put it simply because I got into a, uh, converse, conversation with a commenter the other day about Australia. It's just, you condescend to the Australian position and it's kind of an elitist attitude. And you can take my attitude for what it is when I make commentary on, uh, strategic moves in the game of risk. You can either assume I know what I'm talking about or not, but Regardless, don't take my word for it, right? Figure out for yourselves what is true, what works for you. Um, suffice to say, the level of confidence I have on Australia being good, not great, um, has to do with the fact that I've put in a lot of reps on these settings. <laughs> Some of them are public. Most of them, um, we play the Australian position to get out of the Australia position. Simply put, Australia is a one-point guard interior one point guard exterior and a plus two and everyone's eyes go wow what a great deal and the fact that everyone's eyes go wow what a great deal is the thing that takes it from being good to being not so good because as soon as you fight over it you find yourself in a situation where that plus two gets outpaced by literally one two three of the other positions on the board quite quickly, right? Plus five, plus three. Even the uh, South American player has, can make a play to pivot into Africa, South America, into North America, or some combination, right? The Australian player is kind of off to the side, which, again, can be an advantage, but doesn't tend to be an advantage. Which is the whole point I'm trying to make. All right, let's get some good dice. Turn one Australia is nothing to sneeze at. And we got really good dice, so there you have it, folks. Uh, at least we're not going out first this game. So let's do the uh, Q&A question right off the bat, because it is appropriate to Classic Fix. This question from General Arakawa, uh, 20062. Hey, Pete, how do you deal with a noob slam? Because in one game, I got slammed three times by different players and eventually killed me. Because of that, I dropped from master to low expert. Well, first of all, you're getting noob slammed. And it's dropping your rank. The question is, how representative is your rank, right? So when people do things you don't understand, this is my favorite uh, explanation. When, when players do things you don't understand in the game, um, it's very rare that players play randomly. So it often makes a lot more sense to try and figure out why they did what they did. It's going to be a benefit to your game for you to do so. And the better you can figure that out, right? Why did they noob slam? Maybe it's random. Maybe they just had to go for dinner. Um, but it's far more likely 
that there was a reason either you were in their way or you did something to them earlier or who knows what, but there's, it's far more likely that there's a reason why, um, than that there isn't. And if you can figure that out, right, that's your job as a player. If you can figure out the why, you can find yourself in a scenario where you can put in those iterations, practice, learn, and grow and improve. That's what I'm all about here. How do you deal with the new some See, I don't know how to answer that question. How do you deal with it? Try to avoid it. Try and get out of trouble, right? Try and learn from it. How you deal with it. If it's useful information, if you if you improve your game because of this experience, then it's not all for nothing. And then those rank points that you care so much about are going to mean more because you will have learned. You will be a grandmaster rather than be rated one. And so I move into Europe. Now, this is actually unfriendly to both white and purple. That's kind of why I did it. I want to choke up all of this shit, um, and make it take longer for everyone to get their bonuses consolidated. The um, reason I want to do that is because Australia, since it's only really good early, um, I want to leverage that early game, and hopefully we find ourselves in an open line to make a kill before the board stabilizes, then we just have less players to worry about. So now what does white do? White can actually still consolidate into themselves, just put one troop and fortify to the nine in Middle East. Don't see that line of play. And they get a card in America. Um, blue can go pop pop and fortify the six into Africa. And then actually nobody's in North America. So that might be where Orange goes. Looks like blue is doing it. And six goes. Good play by blue. Great. Uh, now, that blocks purple from being able to consolidate through the same line. Purple just has this useless six now in Venezuela. Maybe purple pivots to North America instead. And that would give Europe to white. Looks like orange is more pressured into Europe. But there's a Fortify Corridor for this 10 to go all the way. Yeah. Let's see if that 6 goes into Europe or if the 10 goes into North America. If I'm purple, I do the, other, the, other, the opposite Fortify here. Instead of doing this, I do, the, I do the opposite, right? I want to move my troops into North America because it doesn't seem like anyone's there. I guess he does want to fight with the inevitable red player who's going to be taking... He's going to run out of cars because red doesn't have any troops in... Um, Asia, so they're going to run out of cards once they finish S-A. Yeah, we chill. No real reason to extend. So with a 19 stack, we're only in the slight lead on this board. How's the cards? No set yet. Okay. Orange and white are both in a wait and see. Red almost finishing South America or yes finishing? Yes finishing. Okay, everyone left for you. So red gets SA without having to kill anybody for it. So spheres of influence. We have red is in South America. Purple wants Europe. I am in Australia. Blue wants Africa. And we have white and orange in Asia and nobody yet <laughs> in North America. And it looks like red is going to be a problem. Or whomever is over there. Now, this is where Australia gets better. So, when the South America player doesn't know how to play the South America position by making an exterior, or when they try to bully for North America, the Australia position becomes much stronger because there is no North America position, and the player in the North America position gets into a war with the player in the South America position. South America is better early. North America is much better in general. North America being my favorite bonus. So when we have this sort of tension, um, like we see in this game, that makes Australia being way off to the side a whole lot better. Okay. Blue's going to hit a two. Yeah. Four V2s are only 75% rolls. So not blue, this is purple. Purple leave themselves kind of vulnerable. Red overextends. Yeah, they, they circle back. So purple wants to be in North America. It's going to be a problem for red. I'm excited to see how this cookie crumbles because 
one of these players will die, either red or whomever takes up um, position in North America. One of these players will die. Also, from having been gifted um, Australia from turn one, Orange has more troops than we, so that's that just goes to show how negligible Australia really is as sort of a powerhouse in Classic Fixed. Looks like Purple Disconnected. So we might have a big old pseudo blizzard stack in Ukraine, which is bad for everybody. That could push uh, white into North America. Okay. What do you do if you're orange here? You set on three? Of course you do. <laughs> you stick your face right... You stick all your troops right in Africa. What the fuck was the point of that? Right, well, we don't hit China because that opens both of Orange's stacks to us. Orange actually could kill us if they got good dice. We set on four. Okay, the red sets gets the ten. And that moves into North America. Yeah, it's white as fucked. If if purple kind of bots out here like that. Puts red in a dominant position. Maybe the red takes North and South America, which is super greedy. But possible. All right. At least they get a trade. Yeah. White goes for North America. They say, I need something. Give me, give me something. White's going to be at war with red by the looks of things. I'm going to show you players. Players in this game. The red player. Is David Juro, Ju Rodriguez, final flag of Colombia, who took South America in the second seat. The white players, UJH50, who is now Greenland USA flag. The blue players, General Trope 17190 from Oman, who just took Africa. The purple players, General Gupta 16976 from Canada, who looks like they've disconnected, but we shall see. The orange player in position five, Bryn the Shrill. USA flag playing as orange. I'm in the ultimate seat playing as magenta. Looks like we are seeing a disconnect from purple here. Which sucks because it blocks off Europe. Unless I want to try for that kill. I could set kill purple set here. Expensive. But then I'd be in Europe. Which I'd rather be in, I think. Neutral bot, so they're not going to be moving. They're not going to be attacking. Maybe it's smarter to be off to the side and let the inevitable red-white war happen. That will probably mean that I'm going to end up in a three-player game with blue and orange. All right, 24 for four is the kill on purple. Yeah, tough to say what orange is trying to do. We're going to set here. I... It's kind of a coin flip if I want to kill the neutral bot here. I think I choose no. Nobody else will, so we will have the pseudo blizzard in Europe now for a while. Maybe someone else does. Who could? White's not open to it. Red keeps putting in North America. I think white is out of luck. Yeah, red's not going to let white take anything up there. Why, well, I think we see orange maybe contest. Really, my job as the Australia player to contest with the same time. If nobody does, then uh, red just wins. Huh? If white doesn't take some kind of initiative up there, they're going to get ground to nothing. I now like black's position the best. He can step up there and not have to lose any ground. But he doesn't choose to. Okay. It's now 27 for four. Nobody took it then. Less likely they're going to take it now. Orange is kind of being a thorn in everyone's side. In Asia, but I bet you they don't let them. Uh, bet you they don't let red hold North America. So depends on how this goes. If I'm white, maybe I try to line up the purple kill, like hit hit the three and then fortify. 
so I can take it next turn and then actually have a position. Four cards plus Europe looks like red's helping. Yeah, does white get bullied by that? Red has red has had incredible card luck. I don't think red knows how to put a position in Asia. If they wanted to, they couldn't because of the orange eighteen stack. White's gonna set. <laughs> do they do they force the issue? They just trade up there. We white doesn't see the way this cookie's gonna crumble for them, but I do. It's not going to be good. They have to do something. They have to take some kind of initiative, like I said. They're not doing it. Okay. Um, if I'm blue, I step out. I don't guard exterior. I don't give that ground again. We do have a 10 set on three. And blue definitely knows how to play. They didn't ally me and they didn't decline. Just move quickly and decisively. They do step out. Good. Good play. Okay. Would be nice if uh, Purple would just bought already. Instead of having to wait 10 minutes for them to go MIA. <sighs> okay. And Orange at 46. Orange and I still tied up despite the fact that I've had Australia all game. This is just, just keeping mention of this, right? How, how important it is to have good cards and not lose any extra troops. Where are we taking cards? Orange, he sets again. 56. Who's the 25? Leaves the 25. I'll lock myself off. I don't love doing that. But it isn't really open anyways, right? Either way, it just goes into orange. So unless I want to suicide into orange, I don't think it makes much sense. All right. Red is almost out of cheap cards. Red's going to be trading with white. Red wins this war. But it is a war of attrition for both. Blue wins this game. Now, all things being equal, unless I can make a kill or get out of Australia. My job here is now to stay out of trouble. Let these guys hit each other. Red puts his whole stack on blue. <laughs> Red puts his whole stack on blue. Oh, no. Okay. White hits purple. Really gain them anything. Now it's 26 or 4. 26 or 4 is a set. I can make that kill. Watch blue pop them. <laughs> yeah. And now orange can give me a card in India. Keep me pincered in. Ooh. Yeah, and blue raises again. That raise is dangerous. That raise increasing the pressure. So what red did was a check. Um, the stacks were almost the same size. So okay, purple goes MIA here, but that pressure has got to break. It's going to be bad for both of them. Now I don't think blue wins anymore. Now I think red sues into blue or blue sues into red. What card does orange take here? The white three? Okay, Orange wants to leave me locked in Australia. Really good play. Orange also didn't ally me. Well, let's try this. Now we separate them from themselves. This is not how you, this is not how normal people play Australia, right? I'm keeping my stack mobile for initiative and I'm willing to risk. Someone going in and breaking me. We'll see if that occurs. I don't think it will. Even though neither orange nor blue are allied with me. It is a mutually assured destruction play for them to hit me. Um, so red's going to take that card. They're going to keep trading with white. In the Americas. And they're going to fortify the seven. Yeah, they're saying, now they're trying to bully white out. Fortify the seven to 36 to call. Not quite a call. Blue's bigger. If I'm blue, I start to think that that might be red's only option. In this scenario, if I'm blue, I take my 49 stack and I actually move it to Egypt, um, opening the road for red to move into the rest of the board and break me for a turn. But I'd much rather lose plus three generation than lose a 49 stack. Right? One, one loses you the game. <laughs> the other does not. 
The other just tells you. And the other might actually make you a friend. So this is a re-raise, right? Continuing to build the pressure. This this ends badly. As much as you see it, this ends badly. We're seeing the pressure build. Okay, they lose five out of three. Good. That's what I wanted to see happen. Okay, and... We take a card. Yep. The informant wants to break my Australia. I kill them. Possible. They can set and kill me. So we want to avoid that. But look how close we are in troops still. What do you do if you're red? Do you greedily take North America? <laughs> this entire board is a bunch of pressure now. I have pressure with a guy who has got no bonus. Yeah. There's no real reason for red to not take North America. Um, What they... What they could do here, which I would really be impressed if I saw it, was depressurize the 48, the 42 to Mexico, which would give blue a line to a plus five. So then we would see red on a plus five, white here, blue on a plus five. But they do the opposite, right? They continue to pressurize. Yeah, they do the opposite. They continue to add to the Africa-Brazil corridor. All right. White is going to be slowly working on... Europe doesn't break. <laughs> oh no. We are going to see an America's hold, I think. Unless blue pops the 46 now. Blue should just kill red. Because now they die to red on this board. Unless orange breaks. Orange won't have much incentive to break. They set and roll me. Move off. Move off my fucking border, dude. So I have to depressurize this. Maybe give them a line. I'm gonna throw red a heart. I could have broken them and I didn't. Let's see if they sue into blue. Mm, no settle for is bad. I'm also trying to direct orange into North America. So if they take that bait. Um, and just for whatever reason, I'm worried about the noob slam, right? This is the funny we had the noob slam question. I feel like orange might just suicide into me at any moment. Just my, my, noob, sl my noob slam spidey sense, folks. Um... Okay, and red is now generating blue. Too many turns of this ends the game in red's favor, so somebody has to be the the martyr for the board. I'm way the hell off in, in Asia. So it's probably not gonna be me. But then we all lose, right? We all lose together. I'm not willing to do it. White's not willing to do it. Orange's not willing to do it. Then we all die. No one's using the alliances to tell me to do it. Ask White to. Orange didn't ally me. I'm actually allied with Red. So it's better that I work with Red or White than Orange or Blue. Because these folks just aren't talking to me. I don't know what to expect. So red is in a very strong lead at 84 troops, followed by me and orange at 69 and 68, respectively. Uh, ooh, orange fucks this up and kills purple, pissing away a lot of their troops to do so. This does trigger trade. Now they probably claim Europe. Okay. Hopefully pushing white into... Or does he kill white as well? Might kill white here. Lol, no. All right. If I'm white, I uh, I want to move into North America because then that that then becomes bad for Pete again. Well, unless it triggers a war between. Red. I don't know what you do if you're red. You stop. You stop bullying blue here. <laughs> it's what you do. 
and you put a stack in Asia and you take you accept the fact that you now have a South American position. Either that or you back off and you take North America, but holding both is wild. White and orange both in Europe. I'm third overall in troops. He does not take it. Okay. Not take the break line. Dude, White's position has sucked all game. Surprised he's still alive. All right, come on, Blue. Surely you're fed up with a 73 stack on your border, right? The 11 moves off and then fortifies to it to, to re-raise, right? Tell me we see a re-raise. Blue's better than red. Orange sets. Dude's card luck has been on point. You want to push white out of your bonus? Mm, take cards. And... My job here is to stay out of trouble, unfortunately. We're all allowing red to get away with murder. We see the full America's hold now for like four turns in a row. But the fact that red has all that pressure on blue is a good thing. This stack coming around the outside is something that we might see them go for the kill. Nope. Never mind. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> That's a lot of troops, folks. Army wants to just take all of North America here and leave the stack here. So that red only has one way to go. Rawr. Just feel like that might backfire, though. <laughs> it's a bold plan, but it might backfire. So. How does blue have more troops than red? What the fuck? That's wild. Red has had the a full America's hold <laughs> for multiple, multiple turns. I'm in the middle of the pack. Red's in the lead at 116, followed by blue at 111. I'm at 94. Orange at 65, and white. Paltry, 54. Troops. I don't know what Paul ever did. Nor do I know anything about his tree. Um, 94 v 60. I mean, at some point, Red starts to think about taking control, right? It's a very dangerous standoff. White's enabling it. White's fully enabling Red. Trade my turn that for sure. Yeah, Blue stops building on the 60. He's building on the interior now. If I'm Blue, I almost think about pulling the full 60 into Egypt. Orange stays there, yeah. I like the little five stack. It's like, five stack says, don't break me. The 94 stack says, or else, right? I'm not guarding. I'm still guarding with a line out, right? My 94 still goes into the Americas. It goes into the rest of the board. Um, but I'm still, you know, pseudo guarding psychologically. Like, nobody wants to take my Australia. But if they did, they would face retaliation. Yeah, Red's not remotely concerned about hitting blue yet, even though they keep fortifying all their troops to Brazil. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't wait for this noob slam. This is a noob slam, folks. This is like a long-term noob slam in the making. Does white finally break red? Do they bought out? Do we lose white here? Losing white would provide a impenetrable guard on this front. So red would only have that would be very advantageous for red. White botting right now. <laughs> that would be very good for red's game. Yep. Okay. All right. I think we all lose unless red pulls the trigger. We either see a noob slam from red. I'm 50-50 on it, right? We either see a noob slam from red or they very slowly eat the whole board. Orange. Also bots. <laughs> then I just got to... Be 10 minutes on the clock for top three. But I would finish third. Again, unless the noob slam occurs. Waiting for this pressure. Keep building it. All 
All right, sitting with a 98 stack in China. And no set on three. 12 continues to press Africa. All right, <laughs> that's double. 124 v 60, that, they'll get a great roll if they roll it. Yeah, and Orange will not be able to take a bonus unless that bonus is North America. All right, set for blue. How does blue avoid the noob slam? How does blue avoid the noob slam? Yes, that's how. I like that blue finally figured it out. See if red changes their behavior or if this just leads them to... I'm curious. Does red take a kill? No one broke Alaska. An extreme good neighbor play. Oh, never mind. Oh, orange. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna taste it. You are going to taste it, orange. I have a, I'm pretty sure you die from that. <laughs> See if I'm right. If I'm red, I just kill him. <laughs> if I'm red, I just kill Orange here. You broke my precious Americas? You die. The insolent. Red is not doing that. <laughs> red is taking and guarding. Uh-huh. That says to Orange, you can't do that again. All right, so White's going to bot. That's fifth. Orange going to get killed. That's fourth. I think I get third here. Unless there's a Sue. No, you don't have to guard against the bot. Red, you're such a fucking noob. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Blue finds that funny because he sees how dumb that is. And Blue Knight's trading. The ratio between Blue's troops and mine are starting to diverge. Similar to the ratio between mine and oranges. Okay, 11, 11 turn for red. Eventually just eats every player. You can step out into Asia and not lose your ground. Move the three over, but he doesn't do that because he's not very good. No, he pulls the 12 the other way because he realized it's a neutral bot. Ah, very clever. Clever girl. I don't know, folks. I don't know. About this very much. General trope with your big stack locked. Yeah, fun, bunch of nothing here. We're gonna have to wait. Let's all just have a big stack. I kind of want someone to take Australia so I can kill them and have an excuse. Righteous indignation. Okay, white goes MIA. Locks in fifth. Both players have died this game from quitting or disconnecting. Yikes. That's a that's the one old yikes of Reno, folks. You just kill orange and go top three. At least orange broke red. Ooh, hitting white five. Don't do that. No, don't do this. <laughs> He's already lost his rank points. No, this just kills you. This just gets you. Just makes you die. <laughs> okay. Or just giving himself fourth. I take Europe here. This is my moment to upgrade. And he takes the opportunity to smack the shit out of red. Wow. Talk about, talk about asking to die. <laughs> All right, so my play is to uh, upgrade my position.
Try not to rush either. Only a little 20 stack there. So the twos indicate I'm trying to hold Europe. The 20 indicates I would like to not be invaded. The 98, it's, it's basically a two point Europe rather than the European turtle. I want my stack active to the board. Expecting to see red die. We upgrade from a plus two to a plus five. Technically a plus seven if I don't lose Australia. We fully expect to see orange die here. And then we go top three. Blue's not allied with me. I don't know if they're allied with red. But I am allied with red. So I'm going to try and team on blue with red. And go into the 1v1. Throw, throw him a heart. Red could just end me, but then they would get second. And they got a four. <laughs> they had a dude's trade for the trouble. 133 moves off or leaves a 20 there. Oh no, he's gonna hit me. Uh, switch to fortify. You meant to, yes. You meant to switch to fortify, right? You leave a 20 there? Red's mechanics are so bad. Yeah, he leaves a 20 there. Okay. Blue is not allied with me. Do they break? Do they steal Australia? Steal Australia. Okay. You like that? I get no response from Red. Well, this is an equivalence play for Blue. Me and Blue just getting plus five. Red gang plus seven. It's not the end of the world. I could go bad to blue, but that doesn't win me the game. I am still in third, but I'm in a closer third. Ten troops off the blue player. I think red breaks the tension. Because they're not good. I just hope it's in my favor. Blue getting nine troops to my eight, so... The, the gap still widens. I'm a meaningful third. I'm a much more meaningful third in Europe than I am in Australia. He doesn't break me. I'm open to him, he's open to me, but we're not breaking each other. Am I also getting nine troops? No, I'm getting eight troops, right? Oh, that's 15. Should probably break that on red. It's been a while since we've seen one of these, right? This is a mostly equal three player stalemate. One of the players I can talk to, one of the players I can't. Red gonna let blue hold 15 territories, giving blue a slight advantage. Uh, I get broken if he misses a card. There's a lot of tension in the middle of this board. It's gonna break. When it does, make a move. Until it does, we be chilling. Chill a little, a little. Those are some big ass stacks, folks. I probably kill blue and take second. I don't really need twos there. The message has been sent. We lock off our stack. 
Somebody opens it. Come on, Red. Let's give up. Yeah, get him under 14. That's right. Yeah. So 12 is the magic number in risk because 12 territories is when you start getting additional troops for holding board. Um, it goes in multiples of three. So you count the number of territories you control, divide by three round down, and you can never get less than three. So nine is the, uh, sorry, three troops is the minimum you ever get. And then if you have 12 territories, you get four. If you have 15 territories, you get five and so on. So this is keeping blue closer to me than they are to red, but they're kind of in the middle. This game basically just goes on like this until somebody breaks the tension. There's no reason for me to force the action. There's no way for me to force the action. Nothing I can do. But chill. Maybe they'll let me hold 12 for a while? Can't imagine why. Okay, I do actually get to hold 12 territories. How lovely. I'm going to play favorable to red. Still, reason being blue doesn't ally me, so there's no way for me to talk to them. Random ass troops in Asia. Yep, opens the stack. Not to him. I don't mind closing it. I'm trying to use it, really. It's always a turn. I can fortify it out. I'd rather these guys hit each other. That's how I'm going to win this game. By them hitting each other. Okay. Really, it's just a patience game at this point. There is still a lot of skill, but the skill all comes from making a move when other people do. Hey, Reg, maybe Reg has some strats. I don't think he wants to come in. I don't know what to say about this. You just gotta chill. Me getting put under 12. Oh, yeah. We are waiting for that. <laughs> I'm going to say me getting put under 12 versus um, blue was a bit rough, but this equalizes us. You got to wonder if the guy would accept my alliance now if I sent it. Do they hit red? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> I win this game. Cool. Yay, the Peepman uh, wins on the game. Yo! Do it. Manuals it? Just trying to send a message.
Why would you give Red the opportunity to kill you? I guess Blue realizes he's he's giving himself third. Switch to Blitz. Yes, switches to Blitz. All right, that's game. Everyone dies. Yeah. We definitely kill Blue first for a number of reasons. Um, they didn't ally me. They sued. Red quits. Red gave themselves third. Instead of waiting for the two seconds <laughs> it took for me to give them second, folks. Thank you for watching. Red is a novice, maybe a beginner. Um, blue was good. Blue was good. I don't know how good. Green was also, or not green, uh, orange was also not bad. Purple and white. Hello, Reginald. Like to say? Doesn't want to say hello. Dag nabbit, folks. Uh, defeating, yeah, blue's an expert and orange is an expert. There you are. Defeating three beginners, two experts. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found some of it fun and entertaining. Maybe even a little bit educational and informative if you are interested in getting better. The game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's come along the ride with me. I have a daily release on YouTube. I do weekday streams on Twitch. And for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.